Hey everyone, welcome to all our viewers across the world, our World Business Forum audience and all our Chief Executive Magazine readers. I'm Martin Lindstrom, your co-host, along with my dear friend and the world's number one leadership coach, Marshall Goldsmith. Now, Marshall is a member of the Thinkers 50 Hall of Fame, which means he's slightly older than me, just so you guys know. And he's written some of the most iconic books out there, including his latest New York Times bestseller, The Earned Life, Lose Regret, Choose Fulfillment. Uh, well, actually, it's, it's already out there and it's doing fantastic. And I read it and I have to say, I know I'm biased here. You have to read it too. It's amazing. Now, beside all those fancy credentials, I think I have to say more importantly than anything, Marcel is an amazing human being. Thank you, Marcel, for, for all your help and support through the years. I just want to say that to you. Oh, uh, look, I am honored to be here with my comrade, Martin Lister. Martin is the world's most interesting person. He is the world's most interesting person. If you get a chance to know this guy, you should. There's no one in my, literally in my life more interesting. Time Magazine, he said he's one of the 100 most influential people but only in the world. I think he's entered in the intergalactic contest soon. So uh, he's written some crazy good books, Ministry of Common Sense, Biology. He's the world's number one expert on branding. He is also just a good guy. He does volunteer work. He's willing to help anybody pretty much at any time. So he has a very, very, very good heart. And he produces this show, which I just find to be amazing. I'm so honored to be a comrade of his. So thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you. And I'll tell you one thing, Marsley. If my mom was still alive, she would be crying right now. You already have one fan. Thank you. For, thank you for that. Now, listen, everyone, if you have any questions or comments, just post them here. Or just tell us who you are and where you are. And if you, by the way, like the show, don't forget to press the like the follow or the subscribe button. Now, Marshall, I think our viewers will love today's guest. Tell us more. Well, today's guest, one of them is Peter Henson. Peter is an amazing guy. He's a, he's a developer of something called the Day After Tomorrow Mindset. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's got a new book out called The Phoenix and the Unicorn. He got tired of unicorn, 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 blah, 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 world's most overused word. So he's got a new book out called The Phoenix and the Unicorn, which I love. He's a keynote speaker and author. He's a believer in something called radical innovation. He teaches at the London Business School and MIT. And aside from that, he's just a brilliant, innovative, and creative guy. So very honored to have him joining us today. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me on the show. So uh, really appreciate it. Now. Tell me about what you call the most stupid model in the world, <laughs> which may not actually be that stupid. So tell us about it. Well, I mean, that whole idea of that day after tomorrow concept started out almost like a joke, and then it started to have a life of its own. But I, I wanted to have some really simple way to get people to think about how much leadership time do they spend on the important things? And I said, what if you would bucket three buckets today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow. So what is today? Today is, it's the hundreds of emails we get. It's the dozens of Zoom calls or team meetings we're on. I mean, we all know it eats up so much of your day. It's the exhaustion, Martin, that you were talking about earlier. But then there's tomorrow. And I, I wanted to find a way is to help companies realize that most of the time when they think about tomorrow, it's actually very, very nearsighted. And I always make the joke, tomorrow is next year's budget. And I love budget season. It's my favorite time of the year. Budget is a yearly sadistic corporate ritual where people put fake news in Excel that is then consolidated into something which never works. And well, the, the CFOs never like it when I say that. But then there's the day after tomorrow. And the day after tomorrow is new ideas, new innovations, new technologies, new business models, but things that could really change the rule of the game. And it's a very simple way. When I ask executives around the world, how much time do you spend? How much energy do you spend? How much budget do you spend on today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow? When I ask them, what does it mean? Most of them will say 70, 20, 10. And that's mm -hmm. a very polite way of actually trying to figure out what it is. But if you look at the reality out there, the reality is quite different. The reality is not 70, 20, 10. If it would be 70, 20, 10, I would be very happy. But the reality is 93, 7, and 0. 
And the problem is today eats up so much of our time. And of course it's important and tomorrow is even more important. But then you think about the day after tomorrow in a world that is constantly changing, I believe that that is going to become crucial if you want to reinvent yourself. Now, this model is a very simple model. I love the model. And then on the very first workshop that I used it years ago, a CEO of the company, this was on a flip chart said, you know what, Mr. Hinson, your model is wrong. You forgot something. And I said, what do you mean I forgot something? It's today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. He said, no, no. And he drew a really big red square on the flip chart. And he said, that is what is our problem because that's the negative energy. And that's what we call the shit of yesterday. And it's fascinating because this is something that has now led a life of its own. And I really urge companies to say, what can you do to minimize the shit of yesterday and spend more time on the day after tomorrow? I love the model. It's, it's led a life of its own. The only concern I have is that I will probably be the guy who will be remembered as the guy from the shit of yesterday. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Well done. I mean, no, I talked a little bit about it in the opening of the show, but how do you then carve out time for the day after tomorrow? Because people are so buried uh, instead of yesterday. Yeah. Well, it's a valid question, but I think you have to form the discipline as an individual, as a leader, but even as a board, as, as a management team. I mean, one of the things that I, and, and I'm sure, you know, Marshall and, and, and Martin, you have the same thing. You get invited to a lot of companies. And, and typically the ones that I really love is when they have their strategic offsite, right? Typically in the summer, you know, for some reason, always in a really nice place, a resort, and they, they have two days of strategic thinking. And they would invite me. And, and I love to challenge them on the day after tomorrow and urge them to not just think about it, but really act on the day after tomorrow. The most horrible thing is often a year later or two years later, they will call me up again and say, oh, we, we, would you want to come back? And I say, yeah, that's kind of cool. I want to see what they've done. And then you go back and you realize they've done nothing. And you say, but, but why? Why do you even ask me back? And they said, oh, it was so fun to listen to you. It was like going to a horror movie in the cinema, but then you go back home and you think that could never happen to us. So I think the fundamental thing is not just to carve out the time to think about it, to be aware, but to actually find mechanisms in your company to act on the day after tomorrow. And that I think is crucial if you want to survive in a world, which I call the never normal that is changing all the time. Yeah. 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 You know, Peter, um, these offsite things. I went to one years ago. I was reading a book called, um, I don't know, the Smartest Guy in the Room about Enron and all the scandals and shit they had, right? Yeah. So I'm reading this book and they talk about one of these offsites in the suburb, exactly what you described, right? And it said, this is where Enron concocted their first illegal raptor scheme. So I'm reading the time and the date and everything. And I said, oh crap, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> don't mention me, don't mention me, don't mention me, I thought, oh shit, <laughs> Dr. Marshall Goldsmith, distinguished coach, leads Enron in their first illegal raptor scheme, I thought, oh Christ. <laughs>